rectangular components of force. Here is an example of inclined plane and in this example you will notice that we are resolving force into its components which are actually not parallel to x and y axis, right? So that's the point to be noted. A box weighing 150 newtons is resting on a ramp that is inclined at an angle of 25 degrees. Resolve the weight into rectangular components that keep the box at rest. So let's first sketch a ramp to represent the situation. So with the horizontal, the ramp is making an angle of 25 degrees. Let's say this is the ramp making an angle of 25 degrees with the horizontal. So that is 25 degrees for us. Now it says that a box weighing, when we have weight, then weight is a force, right? If we write box with mass of, then you have to multiply the mass with 9.8, right? Meters per second squared to convert it into force in newtons, correct? So here we are directly given the force, correct? So let us say this is the box which weighs 150 newtons, right? So the weight will act downwards. So that's the weight which is acting downwards and this is given to us as 150 newtons. Now a box weighing 150 newtons is resting on a ramp that is inclined at an angle of 25 degrees. So we have this ramp inclined at an angle of 25 degrees with a box weighing 150 newtons. Now resolve the weight into rectangular components that keep the box at rest. Now if you make rectangular components along x and y axis it will be very difficult to solve this question. Now what we can do is, we can tilt our frame and then we can have components along the inclined plane itself. Let's say this is our component now. So in this example, what you notice is that we are resolving our force into components which are rectangular components, that means they are at right angles, but they are inclined, they are not along the horizontal x and vertical y-axis, correct? So that is kind of important to understand in this example. Now if you want to make a rectangle with this, what we can do is, let's go horizontally, so that can be split. So from here, we will drop a perpendicular on this axis, right? So that goes like this. So that gives us a horizontal component and a vertical component. And that is the vertical component. You see, so that is how we can resolve weight, which is acting downwards into its components. Now, let's figure out what are the angles involved. 25 degrees is the inclination angle. Since this is perpendicular, this angle will be 25 degrees itself. You can get it from similar triangles. Now, if this is 25 degrees, then the component which is in this direction which we say against the normal that is the normal reaction right will be the cosine component with 25 degrees and the one which is in that direction because now 25 degrees will be here right 25 degrees is here and that side is opposite side so this component which is acting along the inclination will be the sine of 25 degrees. Correct? So let's name them and let's call this as component along FF. So reason of giving small f is that if this body is at rest then it is a frictional force that keeps it at rest and the frictional force will act in the opposite direction. Right? We'll talk about it in a moment. So the horizontal I shouldn't say horizontal, the component along the inclined plane is FF for us, right? So we have a component along inclined plane. And that is what we are calling FF, right? So what is the magnitude of this component? The magnitude of this component is the force, sine of that force, right? So it is 
150 sine of 25 degrees. So that is a component which is acting along the inclination, which is trying to push the box downwards, right? And the component which is against the inclination, which we are calling as a normal component, right? So the normal component, normal to inclination. We are calling this as Fn, normal, right? That will be the cosine of the force. So 150 cos of 25 degrees. So we can use calculator to calculate both these components. So it is 150 sine of 25 gives us 63.39. So you just call it 63.4 newtons. And this is approximately 150 cos of 25, and that is 135.9, so we'll call it 136 newtons, right? So these are our components along the inclined plane and normal to the inclined plane, right? Let's also understand the significance of uh, these components. That is kind of important. It is not a part of this question, but an important part to understand. Now what is FF doing? So the, this force, the component along the inclination, is trying to move this object slide along the inclined path. And the other component is trying to keep it pressed against the wall, against the inclined surface. So that is what these components are doing. Now if I have an example, which I will soon have similar to this, that if the body is at rest, then what is happening? If the body will be at rest, if the frictional force, which always acts against the motion, which will be in this direction, against the motion, is same as the force, which is trying to bring it downwards along the inclination. So those frictional, we can find the frictional force along the surface. So that is of importance when we split it into components. So you'll find applications where components of forces makes a lot more sense and help us solve many different kinds of problems. So I hope you understand now that rectangular components of forces may not always be along horizontal and vertical x and y axis. They could be along any surface, right? So, so that is how, what you should keep in mind. But the important thing is that the angle between the two components is always 90 degrees when we are saying rectangular components. So that keep that in mind, okay? And so simple as that, most of the situation, it is the force into cosine of the angle or sine of the angle, which makes these components, right? So when you make your vector diagram, it will be very clear what should you use. So trigonometric ratios help you to resolve forces, for that matter vectors, into its components. Thank you.